Uh, since you've mentioned uh, Mahabharata, Ramayana, and all the scriptures, and also we've been speaking about... Being... If I can correct that. Please. See, we should not misunderstand what is a scripture and what is a very uh, organic way of writing our history. An epic is a historical document written in a lively form so that it's relevant to you all the time. See, right now, the modern way of Western way of writing history is like this. Ah, uh, this king came, he killed so many people, he did this, he did that, he died. And next one came, he did this, he did that, he died. What are you going to do with this? I'm saying thousand years ago, somebody lived or died, what does it matter to you? But when you read Ramayana, Mahabharat, these are live stories so that you can relate it to you even today. So you, this is genuinely learning from the past because the basis of being human is just this, that we can learn from somebody else's experience, all the nonsense need not happen to us. By seeing something is happening to somebody, we can learn. Maybe it happened five thousand years ago, but we can still correct our lives by looking at what happened to them. So historical documents written in a very organic way need not be mistaken for scriptures. There is nothing scriptural about Mahabharat or Ramayana, they're just stories. History which is written in a way that will always be relevant for people's lives. Exactly, that is my point. Mahabharat, Ramayana, they are very, very relevant to our society. And when you look at Ramayana, the way Sita was treated, you know, these examples of women being treated by men the way they want to treat them, they have certainly left an imprint in the minds of Indian men. There's no doubt about that. Since you said these are the learnings that we take from the past, and we have, we have uh, dramatized them, put them in a very good way, and our grandfathers recite these poems, and these are day-to-day day -day household stories. So my question to you, Sadhguruji, is, you know, when you have a... when you have to learn from these things, when you have been learning from these things from generations, Rama and Mahabharata, and many more stories, how do we expect the current Indian men to not treat his wife like Sita, or not treat his wife like Draupadi. <laughs> I mean, uh, for this generation, we truly want to understand how do you, you know, unlearn these things that we have learned all our life, and how do you hit a refresh button and start all over again by looking at a woman as a respectable figure, as an individual, as a person living and some thinking in her. How do we, you know, how do we teach this to our children? That is what I want to learn from. Let me ask the ladies, uh, would they like to be treated like Sita? Let me put it in the right perspective. Suppose, suppose you were living in Uttar Pradesh, hmm? not today, five thousand years ago, and a man came from Sri Lanka and kidnapped you. Would you like a man who will walk all the way to Sri Lanka to find you or find a practical solution locally, because anyway he was king. <laughs> I'm asking, I'm asking you, what kind of man do you want in your life? <laughs> the man walked all the way, fought a battle, burned down a city to get back his wife. It's not a small thing. But then he again gave her an Agni Pariksha, you know, he didn't uh, trust his wife. See, but so, I mean, we, are, we are taking these words literally. Agni Pariksha did not mean somebody has to enter the fire. It meant she was put through some test, of course, because you are the king, everybody is looking at you as an ideal. How you behave, what you do is very important because the entire nation's life depends on you. Today, our biggest problem is this in the country. This is the Dhritarashtra syndrome from then to now, <laughs> okay? So, he is setting an example in those days. It doesn't matter, she's pregnant, that means his sons are inside. For a king, his sons are important because it's an empire. But in spite of that, he sends her to the jungle because otherwise there's disruption in the country. You seeing this is a negative thing? I think we need such prime ministers and uh, leaders in this country, no matter what, for the well-being of the nation, they will do what is needed.